in the name of Allah, the most beneficent and the most merciful. Uh, what I remember, I think in the previous lecture, uh, we have finished uh, these theoretical water hammer pressure distribution diagram uh, with the, in with time. And uh, just I would like to recap our previous lecture in which we discussed the water hammer phenomena. So whenever we close a valve uh, which is provided at the end of a pipeline, so this valve is basically closure of turbines. And this pipeline is, uh, you can say that practically, uh, uh, it is span stock. And uh, this tank is practically a reservoir, like the Mangla reservoir or any other reservoir. So whenever we close this valve suddenly, then what happens? There is a loading of positive pressure wave which moves with a velocity of CP in the upstream direction. And it reaches <clears throat> to the entrance of the pipe uh, in a time. How much time it goes? L over CP. L over CP. Then what happens? There is a unloading wave of the positive pressure and the pressure inside the pipe becomes normal and it again takes a time of how much? L over CP. L over CP. Then uh, what happens? Uh, there is a loading of negative pressure wave. The magnitude of the negative pressure wave is theoretically same as positive pressure wave and it travels in the upstream direction. And it also takes a time of L over CP to reach uh, a from, uh, to point M. Then there is unloading of negative pressure wave and uh, the uh, which moves with the velocity CP and it reaches to the uh, you know the valve uh, in a time of further L over CP. So it means in one cycle of the water hammer pressure or water hammer phenomena, how much total time is taken? 2 L over CP. 4 L over CP. <laughs> 2 L over CP for loading and unloading of pressure wave. And further, 2 L over CP for loading and unloading of negative mm -hmm. pressure wave. So this one cycle completes. Here uh, we have shown the in this diagram uh, the uh, the water hammer pressure at point N. N. N is the location of the valve. So this is the the at this point the pressure remains uh, for a time 2L over CP uh, the positive and then the pressure changes to negative for a time 2L over CP. Okay, and the main purpose of studying these diagrams is basically to understand uh, this water hammer phenomena uh, in detail. Is it clear? So, so this we discussed already in the previous lecture. <coughs> Today we are only refreshing it. Now we have to discuss the velocity of pressure wave in pipes, which is a sonic wave. And the pressure of uh, velocity of pressure wave is C, which is called as celerity of pressure wave. And uh, this we can compute uh, under root G over gamma into EV, where you know that the G is the acceleration due to gravity and gamma is the specific weight of liquid, mostly it is water. And what is gamma over G, by the way? Gamma over G. G. Yes, density, rho. So it means the C is equal to under root EV over rho. Is it okay? And what is the EV? EV is the bulk modulus of the liquid. 
and its value for water is 2.07 uh, into 10 raised to power 6 kilonewton per square meter. And what is, by the way, bulk modulus? Can anybody define? What is the bulk modulus? The, the change in volume of a liquid when a uh, unit load is applied on it. Sorry, can you repeat it again? Uh, uh, the change in volume of a subject when a unit load is applied on it. Change in volume? Of a subject when a unit load is applied on that subject. Is that? Okay, what is modulus of elasticity? The, the modulus of elasticity. Yes, E, E. Yes, sir. So, so modulus of elasticity is the uh, behavior is actually, uh, if you look at the physical meaning, is the behavior of structure when stresses are applied on that structure. That how the structure behaves, or how much deformations are coming when. Okay, and, okay, 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 okay. Thank you. Structure. Thank you. Any, anyone oh, else who on can. Yes. Uh, anyone else uh, who can. Uh, Define this uh, modulus of elasticity. You have you have studied modulus of elasticity in structural mechanics and again uh, in the previously in mechanics of solid subject. So somebody else who can define modulus of elasticity. The ratio of yes. Anyone, please. Yes. It is slope of stress strain curve under elastic. No. Yeah, this is actually modulus of elasticity is the slope of initial straight portion of normal stress versus normal strain curve. OK, the curve would be like this. Maybe for mild steel. So the slope of the initial portion of normal stress and normal strain curve is known as modulus of elasticity. So initial portion means up to which it is straight, up to which the relationship is linear between the stress and the strain. And that is also we call it up to proportional limit. Is it clear? Yes, sir. OK, some people they define like that modulus of elasticity ratio between stress and strain. Do you think is it correct? No, sir. Yeah, if you want to say this, that modulus of elasticity is the ratio between stress and strain, then you mu you must define the range in which range <laughs> you have to compute the ratio between stress and strain. Actually, modulus of elasticity, of course, is a stress over strain. But in which range? Elastic range. We, not in elastic range. Up to proportional limit. <coughs> Yes. You know, elastic is slightly above the proportional limit. All right. So proportional limit means up to which the stress strain relationship is linear. Elastic limit it may it may go slightly above it and uh, elastic limit means if are removed, then material regains its original shape and size. Is that true? Yes, sir. OK. So if you want to say that this is the ratio between stress and st uh, normal stress and normal strain, then you must say that up to proportional limit. Because up to yes. proportional limit, if you will take this ratio anywhere, the answer would be same, same. or different. Yes, it would yes. be same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Okay, now, now come to the definition of modulus of rigidity. Our shear modulus. What is that? I think you have studied the structural mechanics. The ratio of the uh, shear stress to the shear strain within proportional limit. Okay, yes. Actually, this is the slope of initial portion of shear stress versus shear strain curve. Okay, so initial straight portion, the slope of the initial straight portion that is called as modulus of rigidity <coughs> or shear modulus. Or we can say that this is the ratio between shear stress and shear strain up to proportional limit. Now come to the bulk modulus. What is bulk modulus? EV. Actually, we want to understand this EV, bulk modulus of the liquid. So this is the slope of initial straight portion of volumetric stress and volumetric strain curve. Okay. Whatever is the curve of the volume uh, for uh, volumetric stress versus volumetric strain, uh, then the slope of the initial straight portion is called as bulk modulus. Or we can say that this is the ratio between the volumetric stress and volumetric strain up to proportional limit. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. The, yes, do you have any question? Now, EV for water is this 2.07. <coughs> now, con now, considering elastic behavior of pi, replace EV with K. What, what do you think the pipe material, if the pipe material is a steel? So does steel behave elastically up to certain limit? What is your answer? Yes. What about yes, cast sir. iron? If a no. pipe is of cast iron and you do that internal pressure, do you think the cast iron material behaves uh, elastically for certain limit? Yes. Yes. For a not. small limit, sir. No, sir. No. no. Why no? Why? Sir, because cast iron is brittle material. Okay. What is a brittle material and what is a ductile material? Sir, brittle material way. is one which cannot uh, come back to its original shape after removal of the load, but ductile can come. And also ductile before failure, it is giving warning uh, to fill. No, 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 not like this. Sir, the material, uh, yes, uh, material deforms before it actually fails, while brittle material do not use as a deformation, it suddenly breaks just like a mirror. But the, the okay, your answer is a bit correct, but uh, this is not purely technical answer. What is the technical answer? Well, the difference between ductile material and brittle material. You know, ductile materials shows sufficient strains at rupture, whereas brittle material shows very little strains up to rupture. Or fracture, and uh, that limit could be. What is the limit? Do you know? Uh, how do we classify brittle and ductile material? A strain. How do we compute a strain? Change in length over original length. Length. That 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 is linear strain, Anna. Huh? Or axial strain. So, so uh, what I remember now, I think, is the limit is 0 0.002. If the strains are more than that, the materials up to fracture, 
the material are called ductile. And if uh, the up to fracture strain in a material is less than 0 0.002, then those are called as brittle. Elastic means, elastic range means if a load is applied within that range and if that load is removed from the material, the material regains its original shape and size. It means the strains, they disappear from the material. So that is called as elastic range. And keep in mind that both uh, steel and cast iron, both materials, they have certain elastic range. This is true that mild steel has a longer elastic range, whereas the cast iron has a shorter elastic range. Okay, so the both materials, maybe cast iron or steel, they behave up to certain limit elastically. <coughs> okay, shall we move ahead? Yes, sir. Okay, now considering elastic behavior of pipes, whatsoever is the material, maybe cast iron or steel, replace EV with K. Now, instead of using ev now we are replacing with k and k is equal to ev divided by something one plus this so so <laughs> what do you think the value of k would be more than ev or less than ev less less than EV. yes so the value of K is less than EV if we are considering uh, pipe material elastic. Now, this uh, K is equal to EV over one plus D over T, where D is the diameter of the pipe. When we talk about the diameter of pipe, it means it should be internal diameter, which is in contact with the liquid or fluid. And what is small t? Thickness of the pipe. You know the pipe has certain thickness. EV is the bulk modulus and E is the modulus of elasticity of the pipe material. So this is for pipe material, this is for water. And uh, the what is the value of the modulus of elasticity for a steel? 207 into 10 raised to power 6 kilonewton per square meter. What is the value of the cast iron? E for cast iron, modulus of elasticity. It is 103 into 10 to the power 6 kilonewton per square meter. It means the modulus of elasticity of cast iron is how much of a steel? 50%. Yes, about half. The modulus of elasticity of Cast iron is half of modulus of elasticity of steel. What about concrete? How much is the modulus of elasticity of concrete? 20.7 into 10 power 6 kilonewton per square meter. So modulus of elasticity of concrete is one tenth of the modulus of elasticity of steel. OK, shall we move next or next slide? Yes, sir. Right. Now, then uh, what we did, the CP for elastic pipe materials, we are saying that now G over gamma and instead of EV, it is K. Or if and you will put the values G over gamma EV, one plus D over T EV over E, this is the, uh, this would be the value uh, for the CP, okay? And the value of the CP, which is the velocity of pressure wave, which which the waves they travel, uh, that may range from 600 to 1200 meter per second. But anyway, in all cases, these should be less than 1440 meter per second. All right, this is the velocity of sonic waves. Okay, now come to the uh, types of valve closure. 
how do we close the valve? There we can classify valve closure in these three types. Number one is the instantaneous valve closure. What do you mean by instantaneous valve closure? It means the valve of a pipeline is closed in zero seconds. That is called as instantaneous valve closure. <clears throat> what do you think? Is it practically possible? No, sir. No, sir. This is not practically possible. Anyway, some time will be taken, maybe one second, half second, maybe 0.25 second, but uh, certain time would be required to close the valve. But anyway, instantaneous valve closure means close the valve closure time is zero. <clears throat> then the second is a rapid valve closure and the third is slow valve closure. Now we would like to first study the what is rapid valve closure? So how we can define it? The closure of the valve is so rapid. We are closing the valve quickly. Huh? So rapid that there is an insufficient time for the pressure wave to make a round trip before the valve is closed. OK. It means TC TC, what is TC? Valve closure time. Is less than 2L over CP. So, so quickly the valve is closed. And how quickly? The TC was less than 2L over CP. Could you please understood it? Yes. Sir. Why would say it rapid closure? Yes. Hmm? Uh, sir, why not time is the 4L over CP for complete one wave? Ah, yeah, you know, uh, then the pressure will become negative. OK. And then will become normal. So only the high pressure. Uh, at the valve location. The, the the loading of the positive pressure wave and unloading of the negative pressure wave will take how much time to well over CP. And if the time taken is less than that, it is it would be to well over CP. Because four L over CP is very long time. <laughs> Oh, now what is slow closure? What do you mean by slow closure? It means we are closing the valve slowly. We are taking too much time. How much time we are taking? If the time taken to close the valve is greater than the time taken by pressure wave to complete one round trip. Round trip means going and coming back. It means if the TC is more than 2L over CP, then this is called as slow valve closure. All right? Yes, sir. Shall we move to the next? So now we yes. have studied three types of the closure, valve closures. Number one, instantaneous closure. Number two, rapid closure. Number three, slow valve closure. Instantaneous means time taken to close the valve is zero theoretically, which is not practically possible. Secondly, uh, rapid valve closure in which the time to close the valve is less than 2 L over CP, CP. And the third is slow valve closure in which the TC is more than 2 L over CP. CP. Now we want to derive one equation for the water hammer pressure uh, for the case number one, which is the instantaneous closure. Instantaneous closure means we are closing the valve in how many seconds? Zero seconds. Zero seconds. Zero seconds. OK, now consider this pan stock or pipeline. At the end of the pipeline, this is valve. And this valve is instantaneously 
closed. What will happen to the velocity of flow here initially? The water which was flowing in this direction. You know, the water was flowing in the pipe with V velocity. And now due to sudden closure of the valve, the laminas of the liquid will brought to rest here. And then what will happen here? The hammer pressure will develop, which will increase slightly the diameter of the pipe because pipe is of elastic. Thank you. Yes. And then this, uh, the, there would be then the loading of positive pressure wave in the upstream direction. In time dt, how much distance would be covered by the pressure wave? Cp into dt. Anna, by how do we compute distance? Velocity is equal to distance over. Velocity time. is equal to distance distance over time. So distance is velocity into time. So this is the velocity. Yes. This is the time. So mean this much distance will be covered by the pressure wave in time dt. And uh, <clears throat> here we are considering one element of the liquid. Uh, which is subjected to the pressure forces. So on this side, how much would be the pressure force? P into A. And on this side, how much would be the pressure force? P plus dP into A. So this is some change in pressure between one point and another point. Now the same is mentioned here. If the valve is closed abruptly or instantaneously, a pressure wave travels up in this direction to pipe with a velocity CP. This velocity CP in a short interval of time DT and an element of the liquid of length CP into DT is brought to rest. Now what happened by the way? The liquid was flowing in this direction before valve closure. Now the valve is suddenly closed. Now why there would be the, this, the force will develop? Uh, the pressure will develop because of the inertial effect. And which is the equation which describes the inertial effect? Well, what is the equation? Which law is, uh, we have? Second. That is the Newton's second law. <clears throat> and according to Newton's second law, F is equal to M times A. And here acceleration is dV over dt. This is the change in velocity with respect to change in time. So this dt bring take it over there. So this would be f into dt that is m times dv. And what is how you can compute f pressure into area is the force of pressure which is acting here minus this force of pressure p plus dp which is change in pressure into the a. And this dt the same as this one. And here m is the mass of the liquid here. And how do we compute the mass of the liquid? Density of the fluid into the volume. And into the dv same as it is. Now the right hand side of the equation would become how much is the volume of water here? That is the cross sectional area of pipe into the CP. What is CP? Velocity. So area into velocity is discharge. Volume. OK, yes. all right. So into uh, this row is the mass rate of flow into dV into dt. Actually, you have also to take dt because uh, CP into dt is the length into area. CP dt into area. So this is the volume. Is it all right? So further when we will, uh, uh, you know, simplify this equation, it will become minus dp is equal to rho CP dv. Change in velocity. dv is change in velocity. So how, how the initial velocity was this is V2 minus V1. Initial velocity was V. The liquid was flowing with V and we have closed the valve. 
the velocity was brought to zero and it means the dv is the value of minus v if you will put here minus v and then the this ph will become rho v c p all right so what is the change in pressure delta p or dp this is basically hammer pressure ph is hammer pressure what is this another name inertial pressure hai na so this is the inertial pressure which is the rho vcp so it means this hammer pressure uh, is proportional to or is a function of velocity of flow and cp is it clear okay now we want to derive equation for rapid valve closure ye equation this equation was for instantaneous valve closure for rapid valve closure amount of water hammer pressure remains same mm. only pressure line becomes curved instead of vertical in case of rapid closure and uh, this is the same is the equation so the hammer pressure is equal to rho v cp now come to the slow closure actually what we are doing the sudden due to sudden closure the hammer pressure is rho v cp so rho v cp and in the slow closure what happens we are taking too much time to close the valve so the tc value is much more as compared to 2l over cp so if this is numerator and this is the denominator and if the value of the denominator is more than the numerator then uh, then what would be this ratio its value would be more than 1 or less than 1 less than 1 sir this is this would be less than 1 and proportionally the hammer pressure would reduce suppose it comes 0.6 0.5 or something so means the so if you will simplify this equation it would be this equation so this this uh, the hammer pressure would develop uh, when a valve of the pipe is closed slowly so what is the final equation of the hammer pressure 2 rho v l over t c all right so equations are in the same form rho v c p rho v c p and here twice rho v what is l over t c this is again a velocity and a length over time so it has this similar nature of the equation is it clear shall we move to next slide yes sir one more question ha ji yeah yeah please sir in rapid closure why we didn't add 12 over cp divided by tc in case of rapid closure because yeah. rapid clo in the rapid closure what we are assuming that uh, we are taking a bit time rapid closure means we are taking a bit time but in instant instantaneous closure we are taking zero time actually due to that what will happen instead of uh, the graph of the pressure diagram instead of it remains horizontal it becomes curved so it means initially it is low and then increasing and then decreasing so it's a wave of the pressure wave but you know the peak of that wave would be same as instantaneous pressure so that's why for rapid closure and instantaneous closure the hammer pressure value is practically taken same okay sir now this is the summary yes i think there is some more question someone also want to discuss something <coughs> 
sorry today we will not take a break because we uh, only a little part is left of the chapter so we will finish it earlier i hope so huh uh okay there is no question i think now this is the summary of water hammer pressure equations what is the first case closure over a period of time liquid is incompressible and pipe material is rigid you know this was the first case and we derived this equation in the beginning so means liquid is also incompressible that, that cannot be compressed and material of pipe is also rigid there is no elasticity in it what do you think practically are they rigid or are they elastic j yes they are elastic practically ha huh? practically at very high pressures water is compressible or incompressible you know at very high pre ha huh? compressible yes at very high pressures of course water is compressible theek hai so but this 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 the first uh, case is for liquid is incompressible and pipe material is rigid so what would be the equation of water hammer pressure gamma vl over gt or rho vl over tc all right and uh, now number 2 instantaneous a rapid valve closure liquid is compressible then what is the equation to compute the water hammer pressure rho v c p now you see here also rho v l over t c ha huh? so it has okay. also the same nature now instantaneous or rapid closure equations are same for both a for instantaneous closure and rapid closure now we are considering liquid is compressible but we are not considering pipe material as elastic we are considering is at rigid in that case the hammer pressure equation would be rho v c p and when you will put values v times rho e v all right and uh, then number 4 instantaneous a rapid closure and uh, for when the liquid is compressible and pipe material is also elastic now this is reality we are now going towards the reality the basic equation remains same rho v c p and then here uh, this equation would be v times rho e v over 1 plus d over t e v over e so this the fourth equation and uh, what is the fifth equation for this slow closure so the water hammer pressure is 2 rho v l over t c all right so what is the difference between the first and the last case the first and the fifth one very good yes very nice but i think very nice question uh here it apparently looks that <laughs> that rho v l over t c and this is 2 rho v l over t c uh, apparently it looks that the slow in case of slow closure the hammer pressure is more than uh, in case of the uh, when the liquid is incompressible and mid pipe material is rigid but then what is the benefit of the slow closure so it is not like that actually in slow closure this time tc taken is too long and practically this hammer pressure in slow closure is much lower as compared to here when we are considering liquid incompressible and pipe material is rigid the difference is the difference between this equation and that is in case of slow closure that we are not considering liquid incompressible and pipe material rigid okay that is the difference thank you sir
So now we have to uh, solve few numericals. Now the problem number one, the outlet valve of a pipe, which is 5,000 feet long. So length of the pipe is 5,000 feet. It's closed in one second. So valve closure time is one second. So TC is one second, L is 5,000. And if the critical velocity of flow is four feet per second, if the fluid is flowing with velocity, how much? Four feet per second. Find the rise in pressure, assuming the water to be incompressible and pipe is rigid. Which equation we have to apply? First one or the last one? First one, sir. First one, okay. <coughs> and we have to compute PI. PI means? Inertial pressure. In inertial pressure, yeah, hammer pressure. And uh, uh, so what is that? Gamma over G, V, L over T, or this is rho V, L over T, and just put values. Gamma is 62.4 for water, G is 32.2, length of the pipe is 5,000, and velocity, this one is four, OK, and what is left? T is left and T is one second. So this one second and then why I have multi divided by one double four? Inches me critical. Inches me? Yes, square fit. Sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Huh? <laughs> Sir, PSI <laughs> convert. Kiss me convert PSI may pounds per feet square going scare me. Take a bottle. Ah, sir, you know, inch square may convert to nickel one foot four hundred. Kisco, sir, ye abne five hundred feet lika hena, sir, so is go the hump and inch is may PSI may convert Karinge. So one square foot में convert हो जाएगा. Inches में. Sir, अभी जो आप आ रहा pound per feet square में आ रहा है. हम लोग one or forty one over one four four से multiply करेंगे तो फिर pound per square inch में आ जाएगा answer. अच्छा जी ठीक हो गया जी. All right. So the answer would be this. The hammer pressure is two sixty nine psi. All right. Shall we go to the next problem? Yes, sir. Problem number two, calculate maximum permissible discharge in a six inch diameter pipe. We, we want to compute discharge. Discharge should be a function of what? Velocity. Area into velocity. So it is a function of velocity of flow. If the pressure is not to exceed 200 psi, this this is which pressure? Inertial pressure. <coughs> when the outlet is suddenly closed, so this 200 psi is basically the hammer pressure. And this hammer pressure is a function of what? Velocity. If the velocity of flow is more, this hammer pressure would be more. And we want that this hammer pressure should not increase more than 200 psi. All right. So for e for water, EV is equal to 300,000 psi, and the pipe is assumed rigid. Which equation we have to use? This equation. All right. For liquid is compressible and pipe is rigid. So. <clears throat> hammer pressure is V times root of rho EV. And hammer pressure is given 200 PSI. So why we are multiplying with 1 double 4? To convert inch square to feet square. Yes, good. And this we, we want to compute. 
and we are putting the value of gamma as 62.4, the G 32.2, and the value of EV is 300,000 PSI. We are again multiplying it to convert it into PSF. So the velocity we will get in, not in inches per second, but in feet per second. All right. So we are getting this velocity 3.15 feet per second. If this would be the velocity of flow, and if the valve is closed, it will produce how much hammer pressure? Equal to 200 PSI. All right. So now we can compute the area of pipe. Pipe by 4D square, it is 0 0.196 square feet. And the discharge, which we can allow in the pipeline for not having hammer pressure more than this. So area into velocity. And when you will put the value of these, you will get the answer 0 0.617 QSX. Don't allow flow of water in this pipe more than this value. If you will allow this and if you will do the closure, sudden closure, mm -hmm. then what will happen? Excuse me. Please be attentive towards me. If we will allow discharge more than this, then what will happen? When the van will burst. <laughs> Don't say pipe will burst. <laughs> so the <laughs> no, no, actually, we have not compared the strength of the pipe yet. So what what we are at this stage can say that if the discharge allowed is more than this in the same pipe and when we we'll do sudden closure, then the hammer pressure which will develop in the pipeline would be more than 200 PSI. <clears throat> I think this is more logical. Is that? Yes. Oh, okay, now we are moving next. <clears throat> Problem number three, a cast iron pipe, six inches diameter. Now this pipe is cast iron. We Again, we assume that cast iron pipe can move, can behave plastically for certain limit and five over eight inch thick is conveying water when the outlet is suddenly closed. Calculate the maximum permissible discharge. Again, we have to compute the discharge. If the pressure rises not to exceed 250 PSI, take EV for water as 300 PSI and E for cast iron as 17 into 10 raised to 6 PSI. So, uh, this is the case of uh, what is that case? What is the pipe pipe material is of what type? Compressible liquid hai, and material of the pipe is elastic. Now, which equation we have to use? Equation number four. So the hammer pressure is under root of gamma over G EV one plus D over T EV over E into the V and this V we want to compute. So hammer pressure 250 PSI into that to convert it into PSF. And uh, then gamma is this and G value is this and EV is 300 uh, into 300,000 PSI multiplied by one double four and one plus D, D was uh, how much? Six inches and this is five over eight inches. We don't need to convert it into feet because uh, both in deno numerator and denominator, both they are in inches, so ratio doesn't affect. And uh, here EV value is 300. You see that here we are not converting again into multiplying with one double four because this ratio, uh, uh, sorry, this value and this value have the same units, EV over E. So we are interested to compute this ratio. So that we have, we can do in any units. And uh, if you will simplify the velocity of flow, you will get 1.7 feet per second. So don't allow 
velocity of flow in the pipe more than 1.7 feet per second. If you will allow it more than that, and if there would be sudden closure, then what will happen in the pipe? The, dy the, the dynamic pressure, uh, the hammer pressure, uh, the initial pre inertial pressure would be more than 250 PSI, okay? And now how we can compute discharge area into velocity so that this is the value of the discharge 0.044 kiosk. So do not allow discharge in this pipe more than this value. Shall we go next to next slide? Yes, sir. All right, problem number four. A valve at the outlet end of a pipe 900 meter long through which water is flowing at 2.5 meter per second is closed, number one, in five seconds. Number two, if it is closed in one second. Number three, if it is closed instantaneously, determine the rise of pressure in each case. Velocity of pressure wave may be taken as 1370 meter per second. Now this is the data. And uh, so how we can solve this problem? The three different closure times are given. So first of all, we should compute 2L over CP. That is the time taken to have a round trip of positive pressure wave. All right. So L is 900 meter and the CP is this one. So the answer is 1.313 seconds. <clears throat> now we will go consider all three cases separately. Number one, case number one, TC is more than five, uh, sorry, TC is equal to five seconds. So as TC is more than two L over, over CP, so this is which closure? We Slow took five me. seconds to close the valve. So it is slow closure. Well, then what is the equation for the inertial pressure or hammer pressure for slow closure? Twice of rho V L over TC. So please uh, put values, then you will get answer 900 into 10 raised to power 3 Newton per square meter ya Pascal. Anna? Now case 2. As TC, is TC is how much? One second. As TC is less than 2L over CP, hence it is rapid closure. And the equation for the rapid closure is rho VCP. And if you will put these values, you will get 3.425 into 10 is to power 6 Newton per square meter. Now compare the pressure which produces hammer pressure, which produces due to slow closure and due to rapid closure. Due to slow closure, it is 0 0.9 mega newtons per square meter. And due to rapid closure, it is 3.4 mega newtons per square meter. So roughly how many times the dynamic pressure in the pipe has increased due to rapid closure? Roughly, kitna? Four times. Four times, 3.4 times, okay? Na? So, matlab, wo, sorry, 0.9 se divide karenge, to ye 3.8 answer aayega. So, 3.8 roughly 4. They can char guna. Jo, jo, hai, jo, uh, hammer pressure hai in the pipe that has increased. So, now you can understand the importance of the slow closure. That how it is important. It is very helpful in reducing the water hammer pressure. Now, the third. What was the third case? Instantaneous closure. It is same as rapid closure. So the answer which we are getting here, we will get the same answer for rapid uh, instantaneous closure. So this is the solution of the fourth problem. Do you have any questions? No, sir. OK. Now it's a very important topic. Elimination or reduction of water hammer pressure. You know, this water hammer causes extra pressure, extra dynamic pressure in the in the penistocks. So due to that pressures, we have to design penistocks, uh, you know, uh, of uh, very strong material and also of more thickness. 
So due to that, what will happen? The cost of the penny stock will increase a lot. So, so that becomes uneconomical. And that's why we should try to eliminate the water hammer or we should try to reduce the effect of water hammer pressure. So the three approaches are available. Number one, provide slow valve closure. OK, don't close the valve so quickly. You can reduce water hammer pressure as we have seen in the previous problem. Number two, <coughs> provide a surge tank or surge tower that we will discuss later uh, on the subsequent slides or provide a bypass arrangement with safety valve. All right. Now these we want to discuss one by one on next slides. Number one is the slow valve closure. Whenever possible, the slow closure of valve be over such a period of time that it is classified as slow, means the TC should be more than 2L over CP. If we take too much time to close the valve, that is the slow closure. And due to that slow closure, the hammer pressure reduces a lot. This is the first, uh, you know, the approach we have to reduce the water hammer pressure. Now, what is the next surge tower or surge tanks? A surge tank is a tank like this is a surge tank. Open to atmosphere, this is open to atmosphere. And connected to the main pipe, so this is the main pan stock and it is connected with this. And it is provided as close to the turbine unit as possible. So this is turbine and this is only the length of the pan stock between turbine and the surge tank. And here there is a dam, okay? And uh, this length may be too much. Uh, the distance between reservoir and surge tank, but the surge tank is kept very close to the turbine. So this length is very short. Practically, you can see this is a surge tank. And this one is the pan stock. And uh, here on the downstream side somewhere, there is a turbine. On the upstream side, there would be dam, right? So what happens in case of surge tower? On sudden closure, a pressure wave would generate upstream. Now, once we will, the valve would be closed, so the pressure wave will move like this. But the pressure is dissipated after a length LS. Let's say this is the length LS. Because how the pressure is dissipated by the fluctuation of water level in such tower, so the water level rises here. And that pressure wave positive loading of pressure wave dissipates here. It doesn't move upstream further. So it means due to this rapid closure of the valve, only the positive pressure wave moves up to here and then comes back. So it means thus only a small length LS is to be made strong enough, only this much portion we should make, make strong enough to undertake the water hammer pressure. The rest of the pan stock, which is very, very long, we have to design on normal pressure, not on the hammer pressure. Is it clear? Do you have any questions? So he is certain to say it's the economical. Uh, uh, yes, this uh, could be economical solution in many cases. You know, we engineers uh, over final decisions, mostly they are based on economics. So we try several options. Shall we provide a search tank? Shall we provide a bypass arrangement? Shall we provide a slow closure? So actually, 
uh, these all based on the economic conditions. All right. So the decision is made on the basis of uh, cheapest solution most of the time. So most of the time it becomes economical. But is it clear? So what happens by providing a search tank? Only we need a very small length which we should design by considering the hammer pressure. The rest of the pipeline uh, we have to design on normal pressure. So one more benefit of the search tank is a search tank also serves as an auxiliary, auxiliary water storage reservoir. So a lot of water remains stored inside and suppose due to any reason if for a very short time if the supplies are disconnected so water can uh, can be utilized this water can be utilized to run the turbine all right shall we move to the next slide yes sir now the bypass arrangement with safety valve now this is the reservoir and this is the pan stock and this is the turbine and this one is the tail race uh, where the you know the dis water is disposed from the turbine and you know here there is a valve uh, safety valve and uh, once if the valve if the valve is suddenly closed of the turbine then a wave of positive pressure moves in the up steam direction but this safety valve opens at a certain value of the pressure and we design it accordingly. And when that very high pressure goes here, this valve opens and the water from and this is the bypass pipe. And from this bypass arrangement, uh, this the water of high pressure is released here. All right. And in that way, this uh, the loading wave of uh, uh, positive pressure doesn't move beyond this point upstream. So this is how the mechanism is made. The, in, in this case also, only this much length of the pan stock or pipe uh, we must design very strong considering the water hammer pressure, but on up steam of that, uh, the the pan stock or the pipeline is designed uh, or considering the normal pressure. In this figure, it is uh, explained that how this uh, safety valve works. So this is a safety valve, and this is the inlet of the safety valve, and this is the outlet of the safety valve. And you know, uh, when the pressure becomes uh, more than the threshold, uh, what is the threshold? Threshold is the normal pressure here. And when that becomes more than that, and there is a spring, and 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 this valve stopper moves in the forward direction, and it gets an opening, and the water from inlet goes to outlet. OK, and it will remain automatically open unless pressure becomes same as the normal pressure. And then the normal operation starts. So this is how a bypass arrangement with safety valve can be provided. So is it clear? Yes, sir. Uh, now till now. Uh, we have uh, discussed the three main things in the unsteady flow, the two main things in the unsteady flow. The first was the discharge through orifices uh, and over veers under varying heads. So this was the one case. The secondly, we studied the unsteady flow through pipelines, water hammer, instantaneous and slow closure, ETC. And now the third thing is surge wave in open channels. So that we want to discuss. Here in this diagram, uh, these open the longitudinal section of open channels have been shown. So this one is the bed of the channel. 
So the liquid is flowing in this direction and this is a sluice gate or control gate. And in this figure again, this one is the bed of the channel and this is the a sluice gate. Now, what is a surge or surge wave? So surge is produced by a rapid change in rate of flow. Or there is a sudden increase in depth of flow. That is called as a surge in the open channel. <coughs> and this may produce by rapid opening or closure of a control gate or sluice gate in a channel. So now see here what we are doing to the with the valve uh, with this gate. Are we opening or closing? Oh, closing. We are opening. opening. Yeah, yeah. OK, the arrow is here. So rapid opening, what it causes? It causes positive surge. You know, one before that the flow flow was taking place like that. All right, maybe with this uh, M3 profile. And uh, once you have opened it, now the liquid, this liquid will flow like that. And this is a positive surge. But this positive surge is moving in downstream direction. Is it true? Yes. OK, now this is the same channel. Now instead of opening the sluice gate, now we are closing the sluice gate. Once we will close the sluice gate, the liquid from here, the pressure wave will move in the upstream direction. And this will also called as positive surge wave, surge wave. Why? Because the depth of flow is increasing. That's why it is positive. So then it will move in this direction. So is, is that clear? The concept of surge wave by closing the valve or by uh, opening the valve, valve or gate. Huh? OK, now we want to discuss the upstream positive surge. Now we are considering the longitudinal of this channel. This is the bed of the channel. This is section number one. This is section number two. And this is a surge which has produced due to sudden closure of the valve or opening of the valve. Yes, please. Oh, yes, closing, of closing of the valve and this C is the surge velocity, which is also called as celerity. All right. So at this section, V1 is uh, sorry, Y1 is the depth of flow. And at this section, Y2 is the depth of flow. At this section, V1 is the velocity of flow. And at this section, V2 is the velocity of flow. The same here are shown. And here would be velocity would be V1 plus C and here V2 plus C. And now, uh, you know, we are the considering these once the steady state has been obtained after some time. OK. Now this is at a steady state. Once the steady state is established, then we can easily apply continuity equation between section one and section two. What is continuity equation? Area one, velocity one, that is equal to area two, velocity two. And how much is the velocity one? V1 plus C, V2 plus C, okay? So area one, V1 plus C, that is equal to area two, V2 plus C. This is the continuity equation. From this equation, we can say that V2 is equal to area 1, V1 minus C, area 2 minus area 1 over area 2. The momentum equation is this one. What is the, how we can write impulse momentum principle? Algebraic sum of all external forces acting on the control volume of fluid, which is from here to here. 
that is equal to rate of change of momentum. So these are the external forces F1, F2. These are hydrostatic forces and this is the rho q v2 minus v1 is the rate of change of momentum. Now how we can compute F1? The hydrostatic force here that is equal to gamma a h c1. OK, here it should be gamma. How the G has come that I will discuss. <laughs> so. So gamma area one H C one minus gamma area two H C two. And here what is the row into Q? Q we can compute area one velocity one is the Q. So just by putting area one velocity one and uh, row, if this row will cancel with this uh, gamma, gamma has rho G, so the, re the remaining would be G here. Now I think you can understand how the G has come. All right, because here were gamma and gamma is rho times G, so that is cancelled with this row. And uh, uh, the rest by writing this V2 minus V1 like this. And uh, now we are substituting the value of V2 from here. Then the C value would be this. And for rectangular channels, area is V into Y. And HC, depth of center of area, depth of center of submerged area, that is Y by 2. And if you will put these values, the C, which is the surge or celerity, surge wave or celerity would be equal to under root of G Y2, Y2 minus Y1 over 2 Y1 minus V1. And with this, we have finished this chapter on a steady flow. Now, if you have any questions, you are welcome. So last derivation. Haji? So last derivation is this. Sorry. Sorry, I was going to say that rope you beat to minus V1 of the ship. There is nothing in it. That I explained. F1, what is the F1 is equal to gamma area 1, HC1. Where is the density going? Anji? सर इसके बाद ये रो रो आना चाहिए था नीचे वो देखो वो रो मैंने बताया है यहां पे गैमा है ना यहां गैमा है यहां भी गैमा है है ना तो गैमा किसके बराबर होता है रो इनटू जी वो रो कैंसिल हो गया थ्रू आउट तो बाकी यहां जी बच गया यहां से रो खत्म हो गया यहां क्यू था क्यू को हम क्या लिख सकते हैं एरिया 1 इनटू v1 यस ठीक है ना तो yes, वहां से ये किया और तो दिस इज हाउ यू कैन राइट और ये v2 minus v1 आपने एज इट इज लिख दिया तो ये यहां से आपने लेना है हैं तो ये v1 minus v2 नीचे लिखे हां वो आप v2 minus v1 लिख दें डजंट मैटर ठीक है ना वो नेगेटिव साइन चेंज हुई होगी ना कहीं ओके okay. यस <coughs> तो हमने ये बेसिकली जो आ, वेव सर्ज है या जिसको सेलेरिटी कहते हैं उसकी वैल्यू निकाली है बस इन दिस डेरिवेशन थैंक यू सर तो दैट 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 इज द लास्ट चैप्टर एज वेल एज द यू नो टुडे इज द लास्ट लेक्चर एंड वी हैव फिनिश्ड द हाफ कोर्स ऑफ द हाइड्रोलिक इंजीनियरिंग so now if you have any questions you are welcome or koi sawal hain to wo aap kar sakte hain and please uh, note that uh, this course of hydraulic engineering has uh, very much practical importance bahut sari baatein humne practically ki hain uh, which are applicable in the field And uh, you know, uh, 
how much would be the course for uh, mid semester exam? Wo hoga ji up to water surface profile complete chapter. Theka? Usme pala hoga steady flow through pipes. Oh, sorry, steady flow through open channels. That completely whatever we have discussed is starting from E diagram, from Q diagram, the critical depth. All right. And uh, <clears throat> and then the uh, you know the ways to create critical depth in the open channels, etc. And then the sub water surface profiles. What are the types of water surface profiles? Total kitni types and water surface profile key. Five. Sir, types five. Hai. Water surface profiles key total types. Bara hai, bara. Well, yes, well, sir, bara. See, wo slopes ki. Wo, jo beds, wo jo hum baat kar na, bed slope ki shayad aap baat kar hai, wo paanch hai. hai? Yes. Anyway, to uh, jo hamara dus, uh, next chapter hai water surface profiles mein, usme humne kya kya discuss kiya hai? We also discussed the three equations. First equation was step equation. Second was dynamic or differential equation for GVF ya gradually varied flow. And the third was differential equation for GVF in terms of three depths. What kind si depth is Why, why not, and why C? Why kya hota hai? Why is the depth of flow in gradually varied flow? Why not is the depth of flow in nor in uniform flow? This is normal depth. Bhi hai. And why see critical depth? All right. So ye jo complete chapter hai, water surface profiles wala, uh, up to the end of it. That is the course of mid semester. In, in end semester, in <clears throat> we have to add 20% course also 20% questions from uh, this first part. Please keep uh, remember that. All right. That's OK. So do you have any questions? Sir, the visor wala portion on my equation a coffee buddy buddy to formula sheet provide ogi a yard can be for near some coffee that are confusing be. Oh, I, 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 in, in, maybe there are in sediment transport, there are uh, some equations and big equations. Yes, sir, that. Mm, that please ask her. I cannot say anything. But in my part, the equations uh, you have to remember. Hana? Or Mazadar equation. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So, any more question? Otherwise, uh, uh, we should stop here. Or, and now I have to take your attendance. Attendance, Leilanji. Oh, yeah. Download attendance, so get your tennis. Okay, thank you very much and wish you best of luck. Thank you, sir.